So Maxine Waters went on an unhinged rant on MSNBC, telling everyone that Donald Trump's New York trial wasn't rigged and his language following the trial could lead to a civil war not Democrats prosecuting their political opposition. You guys, we're gonna be jumping into this segment in just one second, but first, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Please make sure to smash that like button and also follow me on the free speech video platform linked down in the description below. Thank you to everyone that subscribed to me over there already. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Congressman Waters, I'm starting with you because you predicted years ago, you said, I'm counting on storming. Um, what do you, your, your, your reaction to Thursday's incredible verdict? Thank you so very much for having us all on today. Uh, let me just say it's a sad day uh, for this country. I'm still shocked and amazed uh, that his supporters would follow him with the lies and distortions uh, that he continues uh, to give to the American people. He says it's rigged. Uh, he says if they can do this to me, uh, they can do it to you, bringing in others uh, <laughs> to he cover uh, the lies that he's telling. I'm amazed uh, that those who claim to be so patriotic are so unpatriotic. I'm watching not only what happened in January 6th in Washington, D.C., but what is happening now. And men and women in the Republican Party don't have the courage nor the patriotism to stand up for democracy and what's good for America and understand and be able to honestly say to the American public that this used to be president, this former president is wrong. Whenever he loses, wherever he loses, he'll say it's rigged. He'll say that somehow he doesn't deserve uh, to have to be lawful. Well, <laughs> really, really fit a lot of buzzwords in there. Talk about January 6th, democracy, all of these things. And saying that it is unpatriotic to be following Donald Trump and saying that this was a rigged trial against him. Let's talk about the facts because obviously Donald Trump is 100% correct about this. You have a district attorney. We all know this stuff. A district attorney, Alvin Bragg, that ran on getting Donald Trump, uh, looking at uh, falsifications of business records charges, which is a misdemeanor, but decided to elevate that to a felony by connecting it to election law. No state prosecutor has ever charged federal election laws as a direct state crime in the history of the United States. This is not a thing. Okay. This is not a thing. You also have the judge that donated money to Joe Biden. You have his daughter that raised millions of dollars off this trial. And back to the DA really quick. You also have a DA, Alvin Bragg, that downgraded 60% of felonies in 2023, but decided to upgrade, it, uh, upgrade this charge against Donald Trump. This seems biased, okay? Also in a district with 85% roughly Democrats. So you have a jury that's stacked with Democrats. You have a tr you have a trial. You have a courthouse that is stacked with people that hate Donald Trump. And it's not just me saying this. It's not just Republicans saying this. You have Democrats saying this stuff as well because it's so blatantly obvious. CNN's top legal analyst, um, Ellie Honig, wrote an article in the uh, New York Mag the other day just tearing this trial apart. All right, everyone, let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor, the people that made this video possible, Allegiance Gold. So as we close in on the election, it's really no surprise that Donald Trump is gaining support among all Americans, especially the working class. While many Americans are struggling, the Biden administration continues to attempt to gaslight the American people, saying that the economy has never been better, when we all know the country's facing challenges. Among those, rising inflation, rising debt, and rising interest rates. There is a reason why so many of you guys watching have invested in gold, because it stands on its own as a beacon of stability, and also over the last five years, it's also almost doubled in value. Allegiance Gold has done things the right way from the beginning, so it's really no coincidence that they've earned the highest trust ratings in the precious metals industry. They have five stars with TrustLink and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver, or if you prefer, you can have it delivered securely to your front door. And right now, you guys can get up to $5,000 in free silver on a qualifying investment when you go to protectwithklug.com or call 866-335-KLUG. Protect your financial future today. Visit protectwithklug.com or call 866 866- 335 Klug. I'll put a link down in the description below. He says the judge donated money, a tiny amount, $35, but in plain violation of a rule prohibiting New York judges from making political donations of any kind to a pro-Biden, anti-Trump political operation, including funds that the judge earmarked for, listen to this, quote, resisting the Republican Party and Donald Trump's radical right-wing legacy. Oh 
my God. <laughs> Would folks have been just fine with the judge saying, uh, staying on the case if he had donated a couple bucks to re-elect Donald Trump, MAGA forever? Absolutely not. And of course, absolutely not. And Ellie is being completely honest here. This is obvious. This is obvious to anybody that is capable of just for a second, not putting party over a country and actually just thinking with their brains for a quick second. But this double standard is of course the left's standard. This is the preferable standard for the left today. Because if you had the shoe on the other foot, it goes without saying that the left would have lost their minds if Joe Biden was being prosecuted by a district attorney that ran on getting Joe Biden. The judge donated to Donald Trump. His daughter raised money for Republicans. The jury was overwhelmingly right wing. Of course, the legacy media would have been losing their minds. You are a liar if you pretend otherwise. Let's move on. Well, as the president said, no one is above right. the law. Those right. jurors on that jury are to be commended for what they have done. You had seven men and five women who stepped up to the plate and did the hard work and rolled out to America and told America the truth. This and man is guilty. Not one time, two times, or three times, but on all <laughs> but, 30 pounds. That's amazing. Right, right. Nobody is above the law, you guys. Nobody is above the law. You know, I saw this tweet the other day. Actually, I believe I reposted it. Somebody saying, you know, you have uh, Joe Biden saying that he's completely ignoring the unconstitutional payments to pay off student loans. He's just going to do it anyways, right? Because he's above the law. It's illegal what he's doing, but he's above the law. You also have this right here, this article that just popped up the other day. Biden admin quietly dismisses over 350,000 asylum applications from immigrants since 2022. Once cases are terminated without a decision on the merits of their asylum claim, the migrants are removed from the legal system and they are not required to check back in with authorities. It also means the migrants can legally go anywhere they want inside the U.S. without having to worry about de being deported. Uh, yeah, nobody's above the law, right? And, and for me and my friends, they get rewarded. And for my enemies, they go to jail. More on Maxine here. We have a, a tweet from Libs of TikTok. She posted this edit. I thought it was pretty clever. Let's go ahead and uh, keep going. I am going to spend some time with the criminal justice system, with the justice system, asking them, tell us what's going on with the domestic terrorists. Are they preparing a civil war against us? Should we be concerned about our safety? What is he doing with this divisive language? It is dangerous, and we're going to have to make sure that we understand uh, that we're not at risk with this man talking in the way that he's doing. I will go and take Trump out tonight. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. You guys, the double standard is the left standard today. That's what it is. They have their own set of standards. You can't do anything. They can do everything. This language coming from Maxine Waters is so disgusting. This language, oh, Donald Trump's language following the trial, him being upset about this being completely targeted, a biased trial against him, uh, that is so dangerous. And what we're doing, what we're doing, breaking massive precedent over the most ridiculous uh, charge ever. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it, right? Don't worry about it. We're allowed to do all this stuff. You're not. It kind of reminds me, you know, you just saw this edit showing Maxine Waters just nasty language. Lives to TikTok says, but she's the one who is actually called for violence. When will she be investigated? Calling for people to go out and target members of Donald Trump's cabinet. Push back on them. Tell them they're not welcome here. Go harass them. <laughs> go harass them. Oh my gosh. It reminds me of just how much the left has actually memory hold a lot of these situations. And I understand, you know, there's nasty people on the right and the left. But when it comes to how the left operates, this, you know, they have the army of the legacy media behind them to protect them, to help memory hold these moments, these specific moments that Libs of TikTok highlighted right here. Nobody's calling her out on this stuff. 
And nobody calls out the left when it comes to just the insane rhetoric at the protests, let's say 2020, 2021. It, it was common if you were at a Black Lives Matter protest or an Antifa protest turning into a riot, most likely. It was common to see people with Donald Trump's head on a stick saying, get him. It was common. I don't know if you guys remember this. It was common to see celebrities actually killing Donald Trump in a music video, pretending to kill Donald Trump in a music video, or holding on to Donald Trump's fake dead head. All of these things were completely common. But what the mainstream media will remind you of is like a, a little makeshift noose on January 6th that was in the crowd of 600,000 people, pretending that these are the violent people. These are the domestic terrorists as Maxine Waters just referred to. And they completely memory hole all of these things. Going, again, going to protests in 2020 with Jorge Ventura, Julio Rosas, Savannah Hernandez, any of these people, they'll, they'll all agree with this. It was common to see violent signs, violent calls to action at these demonstrations. You would see it at every single one you went to. And here they are, just memory holing it completely, saying that you're not patriotic if you look at the facts and just call out what you're seeing. Again, CNN's top legal analyst writing a scathing article about this trial. Anybody that is willing to be honest is willing to look at it this way. <laughs> Resisting the Republican Party and Donald Trump's radical right-wing legacy? Oh, it's not a biased trial against Donald Trump. It's, it's, it's not a biased trial at all. Don't forget it. You know, stop asking questions. Don't look for the specifics. Don't, don't talk about the facts. And you'll notice during this segment that she doesn't really talk about the facts. They'll, they'll mention the jury, but the jury didn't really have a choice because they weren't given all the evidence. They won't talk about the specifics of the district attorney or the judge or anything around that. That's completely inconvenient. They don't want you to be informed. They don't want you to see the actual facts. They just want you to know that a jury convicted Donald Trump and he is now, or he's going to be, a felon. That's the only thing they want you to know. And as long as they can keep the specifics out of the way, because if the average American actually knew about the specifics surrounding this trial, they would be appalled by what they're seeing. But that's not the goal. The goal is to be as vague as possible, bring up January 6th, bring up my democracy, and bring up how Donald Trump is going to be a felon. Certainly more people need to be educated on this trial. They need to understand the facts. I actually went out and did a street video on this, so it's gonna be dropping in the next day or so, so you guys can look forward to that. Let me know your thoughts on this hypocrisy down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Please make sure to smash that like button. Also subscribe if you're not subscribed already and hit that bell notification button so you're notified next time I post. I'll catch you all in the next video.